Welcome to the EW Podcast. In today's episode, I speak with Paige Roberts. Paige is a sports performance expansion specialist who works with both professional and amateur athletes in sports including football, hockey, and extreme sports like skiing. In this episode, we talk at length about CTE, or chronic traumatic encephalopathy, and the therapies currently available to address the disease. CTE was brought into the national spotlight with the 2015 movie Concussion, and since then, it has become a major cause of concern for current and former athletes, as well as the parents of young athletes. Before talking with Paige, I was under the impression that there was little that could be done for a CTE brain, and I was happy that by the end of our conversation, I knew this assumption was wrong. If you think you may be experiencing CTE symptoms or know someone else who might be, I would highly recommend contacting Paige or finding a clinician in your area offering similar services. Anyway, without further ado, here is my conversation with Paige Roberts on treating CTE. I'm here with Paige Roberts. Thank you for chatting with me. Yes, absolutely. It's exciting. (laughs) So let's just kick this off with um, a little bit about yourself and what you do. Okay, yeah. So um, I am a sports performance expansion specialist. And um, basically what brought me to that profession is my undergrad is in exercise science, and then my master's is in social work. And I'm a licensed clinical social worker. And I started to become very interested in uh, brain body therapies that uh, assist athletes and just anyone in reversing and or recovering from uh, brain or body injuries. And really tuning up the nervous system um, from taking any kind of uh, blow to the nervous system. <laughs> Interesting. Are you an athlete yourself? Uh, yeah, I was a past cross country runner in college, and I was an alpine skier. And still to this day, I just love swimming and skiing and lifting and yoga and hiking. And yeah, I I love sports. So yeah. Are, do you have uh, a history of traumatic brain injuries yourself? Yes, actually. Um, I fell off a slide when I was um, seven years old and was unconscious from that and started to have um, a lot of different issues with uh, reading at that time. And uh, no one really knew anything about concussions back then. And then my high school swim team uh, school bus rolled over on our uh, route to our first swim meet my senior year in high school. And then um, four years after that, when I was 22, I had a car accident where I went off the interstate and went through a fence and had a... uh, fence post to the side of the head. And at that time, I was really pursuing um, getting a graduate degree in exercise physiology and started to suffer from the accumulation of those post-concussion syndrome symptoms and went to multiple different doctors. And no one could really figure out why I couldn't sleep. You know, everything else was fine in my life, but why I couldn't sleep, why I uh, could just kind of go for days and then would have kind of these emotional um, breakdowns because I hadn't been sleeping. Uh, They tried all sorts of different types of medication and none of that worked. I would work out for like three or four hours a day, then work my shift at the hospital. I worked nights as an electrocardiograph technician at the time and just couldn't figure it out. And at that point, I started seeking out different types of therapeutic modalities and came across this type of therapy called brain spotting, which um, you've discussed in one of your previous uh, podcasts, um, which my mentor had been doing it with athletes in Steamboat Springs, Colorado. And so I went in and he told me about it. I put on the headphones, which is bilateral sound going back and forth, which kind of gets you in an altered state of consciousness. And then you manipulate the visual path, which is the um, reprocessing aspect for uh trauma therapies, EMDR, eye movement reprocessing desensitization, and then really accessing the body where you're feeling those past um, traumatic memories from the incident itself or the trauma that accumulates after going through a traumatic experience. That's somatic experience, Dr. Peter Levine's work. And then just really picking these things apart, not just being like, oh yeah, well, I had these accidents. It was awful. I was back in the gym the next day, even though, you know, um, (laughs) 
had a bruise on my face and this all, all that kind of stuff. And now I know that's actually was a positive thing to get back into uh, cardiovascular exercise right away, says Dr. Mickey Collins with the University of Pittsburgh Medical Center. But nonetheless, uh, I got to the point where I wasn't afraid to ride on icy roads anymore and I was sleeping. So it was very uh, profound and um, got me to change uh, my course of action to get a master's in social work like um, Roger Reynolds had uh, to be able to work with uh, other athletes and individuals suffering in the manner that I had. And then I got trained in that about eight years ago go after I got my master's. And yeah, so I've been working with athletes ever since with that therapeutic modality. Um, yeah. And the purpose of our conversation today is going to be about CTE. Um, how, how did you, um, I guess the first question, cause I, I want to, in this conversation, um, my goal here is to create a resource for people who may feel like they are struggling with symptoms or know someone who might have CTE. Um, I want to create a resource for them to understand that it's not the end of the road, you know, and that there's things that can be done. So with that, so on that track, after um, I began my practice and I started to delve into suicide in athletes and what caused um, an athlete to take their life. Uh, And it was very much focused on this concussion issue that we have going on right now and the development of CTE, as you just said, and kind of found that really with the um, CTE, it's the overinflammation of, um, you know, the persistent inflammation of the brain, uh, as well as the accumulation of the tau protein, uh, the lack of the flushing and the dumping that should naturally take place uh, between uh, 10 p.m. and 2 a.m., which uh, we flush out seven grams of protein every night. Um, So along those lines, like, (laughs) yes, so insomnia is a big issue when it's coming when we start to talk about um, traumatic brain injuries, concussions, uh, uh, multiple sports concussions. And Dr. Jeffrey Kuchers, he's an MD neurologist with um, the American Academy of Neurology. He actually even has a whole research center on that sleep issue um, in Ann Arbor, Michigan at this moment. So uh, stuff is developing very quickly. There's absolutely hope. Um, But I started uh, venturing off about five years ago and understanding beyond just reprocessing the memory itself, getting the brain to be able to uh, calm down at night, actually flushing that tau protein and healing and recovering because if we're not sleeping at night, we are not recovering. We need eight hours of sleep a night or else um, our brain is actually you know, still tearing down. Um, we're not recharging our serotonin and dopamine. So some of the post-concussion syndrome symptoms, if someone is not sleeping, it's some of that lack of sleep too. Um, but regardless, um, Then I started to become interested in like, okay, so we have the uh, psychotherapy, the trauma reprocessing that way. That's one of your number one um, aspects of recovery. And then you've got um, what I found uh, five years ago with uh, Dr. Michael Homblin's research out of Harvard was photobiomodulation light therapy. And so you can go to the photomedicine um, center of, well, and even just going on Googling Dr. Michael Homblin. (laughs) of Harvard, uh, you will see that it takes you to the photomedicine link. And you can look under his name particularly and see every single peer-reviewed study that he has done about healing the brain with light. And it's basically um, near infrared and red light that you're applying to the tissue on the head. Um, In his current research, he's putting it on the shins and the sternum where we have our most amount of stem cells, and then those become mobile and stimulated and go throughout the body and heal the brain that way. But me personally, in my practice, I've seen people expand beyond coming in with um, not a lot of cognitive, um, you know, cognitive delays and uh, diagnosed neurocognitive disorder to expanding beyond and coming back to where they were prior to their car accident or uh, sports injuries, whatever that looks like. So it's really bringing the blood flow back to the tissue, stimulating the mitochondria, the powerhouse of the cell, allowing for you to sleep again. Um, I personally do my light therapy every night and it makes me fall asleep. Um, Okay. So these very important things that assist with the recovery of the brain. Um, Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, well, I do want to get into photobiomodulation for sure. Um, but before we get there, I would just like to, um, set the stage of CTE itself and, you know, talk about the symptoms, um, and also, 
you, you, you touched on it a little bit, but what the goal of seeing you is if you have CTE. So, yeah. And so CTE is going to be um, like the last point beyond your post-concussion syndrome sy- symptoms. Okay. So we start to get to the point where we're not sleeping. We have kind of upset to the drop of a hat. We've got uh, kind of cognitive delusions to where, um, you know, sometimes we think everyone's out to get us. Uh, one little thing goes wrong. So we think that may be some aspect of a conspiracy or something. Um, I've seen this a lot, <laughs> uh, especially with, um, you know, past college or uh, professional athletes. Um, just the aspects of feeling a lot of grief, feeling a lot of anger, uh, a lot of worry uh, over um, kind of the OCD obsessive thought process around uh, what's going on currently in your life and things in the past that have happened and um, just really some of the trauma kind of symptoms, honestly. But so that's what you're seeing with CTE. And then of course, just the working memory, you know, not remembering, mm-hmm. you know, where you parked your car, that type of stuff. And then just um, long-term memory. I've had a couple consulted with some um, past football players, wives who they're going, they don't even remember playing. Wow. So those are things that we're seeing. Um, Would you say that uh, memory issues and sleep issues are the main motivators for why someone in like anger. Consi- in anger would be the in main anger. kind of f- red flags for someone? Yeah. And um, honestly, not being aware of your own behavior. We need to remember with CTE and concussions and neurocognitive disorders, like uh, we start to kind of lose our filter. So maybe we're uh, dropping F-bombs in front of uh, young kids and uh, the person's not really aware. So I've seen that a lot of times within family systems of just not really knowing what is or isn't appropriate to be saying around other people. Um, and again, just the quick to anger, the quick to get upset, the quick to um, really um, you know, exacerbate uh, certain um, st- scenarios that may not be that um, intense in reality, but they're intense to the individual. Their brain just is not um, fully communicating. And so that's what I guess um, you would see in an individual. Also, we start to see things like, so what's in the brain is the body, what's in the body is in the brain. So we look at things like um, if their brain is not um, you know, there's not a lot of activity in certain areas. They could be, you know, gaining weight, uh, having uh, gait issues, having, um, you know, reflexes, uh, that, that type of, um, you know, symptoms as well. So we, we start to see physical stuff when it is also the brain health too. So, yeah. And all of those are things that can be addressed through uh, your yes. therapies? Yeah. Uh, through multiple therapies and talking about even further t- with that. So, you know, the actual CTE itself, the chaperones within the brain that are supposed to be escorting the uh, protein out. I said that we process out seven grams of protein every night out of our brain, 24 grams out of our body. So what's in the brain is the body, body is the brain. It's also their processes. Um, we, those chaperones get really busy with the misfolding of this tau protein and they start to try to deal with that. And then it starts to uh, get Uh, backed up and doesn't have the time to continue to process out this tau protein. And so that's what they're showing when they're showing the little, uh, you know, cut up pieces of the brain tissue that has little brown spots. That's that tau Mm -hmm. protein. Um, So we have to find ways to increase the circulation um, and decrease inflammation. Uh, We need healthy nutrients in the body. Um, We need to stop all of the harmful substances because what I'll come across a lot with individuals is that they're eating a lot of foods with additives and, you know, all of our uh, wheat at this moment in time is being uh, sprayed with glyphosates and that Roundup, we've heard a lot about this kind of stuff going on. And so that's really inflaming to the gut. And so once we break down the gut junctures, uh, the uh, acids and Um, food and our gut starts seeping into our um, bloodstream and then that can go and cause more inflammation with the brain. So it's, we got to have some good gut health. We got to stop eating uh, a lot of additives and toxins and unhealthy foods. Obviously, um, you know, alcohol and drugs, we got to stop that immediately. So that's already not a brain food. Um, so I'll see individuals that are still drinking and I'm going, Ooh, we got to stop this drinking. We got to get you exercising. We've got to start with some light therapy. We got to start reprocessing some of these traumas. So the body's not overly producing cortisol with every single experience because it's amplified. We're bringing back all of our 
past memories every time um, we, out of our peripheral vision, get some kind of sense that someone's running at us or something. It, that's, again, is, 97% of our lives are unconscious uh, <laughs> reaction. <laughs> is CTE um, tied to emotional trauma like that every time? Or is it, can it ever just exist on, on its own as a physical, a physical disease? Does that make sense? Yeah, but I think that when it comes to any kind of physical injury, um, there has to be some aspect of emotional trauma um, because it didn't serve us. So I have not yet came across an individual that I can't get activated on even just a couple, um, you know, concussions that, that during football or so on because they got pulled out of the game or because they got injured and, uh, you know, another limb on their body got injured or something of that nature. So it's not that, you know, it's like it has to be like, oh, adverse childhood experiences have to be attached to it. But I do believe that there is some level of the body constantly signaling like, oh, no, no, we don't want to get our head hit again, but mm -hmm. on an unconscious level. Right. So when you're reprocessing things, you just work on going through the dialogue of the past sports injuries someone's had, doing some light therapy, some nutrition education, getting them back to cardio uh, respiratory training, which strengthens the NRF2 detox pathway and has been proven to increase dendrite production. Mm -hmm. So your first step, if you're out there and you're worried about getting CTE, it is uh, cardiovascular exercise, like cardio respiratory endurance exercise. Uh, it is, um, eating healthier. It is, uh, <laughs> reading more. It is staying away from EMFs. What are EMFs? Oh man. So electromagnetic frequencies. So don't put your phone against your head anymore. Stay off the computer. You know, don't be staring this close to the computer all day, every day. Turn off your Wi-Fi at night. Turn off your smart TV or unplug it from the wall at night because those frequencies are actually uh, stimulating our same part of our brain or primitive part of the brain that uh, causes us to do that fight, flight, freeze mechanism, which is the same as the muscle guarding if we think someone's coming at us to you know, tackle us and for us to get another head injury. So we're actually producing cortisol unconsciously. Cortisol is the inflammatory um, you know, trigger within our body. Cortisol is pain. We're trying to get rid of inflammation. So you want to be careful because if you've had a head injury, you're already vulnerable to being more um, activated by all these frequencies around us. So it's, they're fairly simple things, though. Uh, flip the breakers at night. Eh. <laughs> You'll actually have more dreams because then you're not consciously or you're not you're able to go into REM sleep and you're actually producing melatonin. Melatonin and serotonin can't be present at the same time. We stimulate serotonin with the daylight and when we're watching uh, things on the blue light on TV and all that kind of thing. Um, and melatonin is supposed to be produced at night. We know that melatonin has some neurogenesis properties. So it's like, oh yeah. So no blue light at night, turning off all the EMFs, and you will have dreams tonight. I guarantee it. <laughs> <laughs> is that why they say you shouldn't be uh, watching TV or looking at bright lights after you've had a concussion? Well, yes. And the other aspect of it is just that it can be overstimulating for the eyes because that's that sensory processing aspect that is just too much at first. But what Dr. Mickey Collins has found at the University of Pittsburgh is that we used to have someone sit in, you know, a dark room for a month, and they actually call that the oven. You're baking in your system, or in those symptoms, right? You're baking it into your uh, nervous system. It's like, no, 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 you don't want to do that. So anymore, it's like, hey, limiting those things that are kind of sensory processing overload, then yes, the EMF factor's there. But um, you really want to return to uh, physical activity and not tackle football per, where you could hit your head again. It's that you want to return to getting back on the exercise bike. You want to go for a brisk walk. You want to you know, they're saying it could be even up to 72 hours post-concussion that you want to get back out there moving. Hmm. So, yeah. All right. Well, before we get into the therapies, this seems like a good time to ask you, um, what sort of recommendations do you have for athletes you see who aren't willing to give up their sport, um, but do care about their brain health? How can they have their cake and eat it too? <laughs> <laughs> no drugs, no alcohol, no crappy food, inflaming, neuroinflaming foods, again, are your additive types of foods, your uh, wheat, your dairy, all of those things are very inflaming. Uh, you stay away from those things. You get plenty of sleep every night. Uh, there are multiple different types of supplements out on the market. Um, when you're looking at uh, things that assist with brain health in general, 
uh, really your best bet truly would be go to a nutritionist or a functional medicine doctor and have them do a panel to see what nutrients you're low in and then have recommendations of ones that would help you, you know, because we're talking about like the omega-3s for the brain, uh, coenzyme Q10, uh, you know, there's just some basic ones that are very good for you, but you really, some people are allergic to certain uh, supplements. Some people don't need certain supplements. I mean, we're all very unique. So it's not just like a one, you know, uh, (laughs) yeah, it's not a cookie cutter approach per se, but nonetheless, that's a very proactive aspect because we know that your brain recovery is de- de- determinate on um, how healthy your brain was going into the injury. Mm. So we see that all the time with people who've gotten a car accident out here when I'm helping someone with that kind of trauma. And uh, they were just not healthy to begin with. They weren't exercising. It's like I've seen uh, football players and hockey players have a better recovery because they're more physically fit and eating healthier mm. um, he- when they went into the injury. So it's almost like you're conditioning for a concussion if you're in very good, um, you know, high fitness level and uh, yeah, eating healthy, getting enough sleep, all those things. Interesting. Does CTE exist on a spectrum? Um, I believe so to an extent, but they can't diagnose it truly to what degree yet in the living. Right. I think once you start to develop these symptoms, you reach out to someone who's doing these alternative holistic therapies because you're not going to get very much relief when you're going into a neurologist at this point in time because they're really just looking to diagnose one of the neurocognitive disorders or saying you could potentially have CTE. It is going to be a holistic. Um, Yeah, it's going to take more work. There's not going to be a pill ever that's just going to reverse it per se. Um, Mm -hmm. It is truly just... Uh, detoxing the brain and bringing back blood flow, proper nutrients, all of those things will heal CTE. Does it matter how long after um, the last brain injury was um, when someone starts the therapy? Does that have any effect on how the efficacy of what you're doing? So Dr. Michael Homblin has found with the light therapy, we want to get it on the brain as soon as possible, and it can reverse the symptoms right away when it comes to immediate concussion, right? Then we've also seen with the light therapy, we've taken a group of veterans who were beyond the year point. So they say after a year, you're kind of plateaued with post-concussion syndrome symptoms. And these were pretty severe. They're blast wounds. They're pretty severe uh, traumatic brain injuries. Uh, They put the light therapy on them for a year and it reversed all their symptoms as measured by a spec scan, which is measuring blood flow. So I've seen people expand beyond at any point in time. Um... I haven't seen, you know, someone who's came in after like 20, 30 years or something of that nature, but I have seen 10 years post and starting to dealing with more of the anger and some of the cognitive symptoms and they've gotten, you know, the light device and have made phenomenal progress. I think a lot of it is the awareness of knowing that you're starting to develop symptoms, being proactive with all of the aspects I just told you about. I mean, it's not just one thing. I think that we would like to think that we could just do one thing to reverse all of this, but it took multiple things getting us into this situation. I have not came across an athlete yet, <laughs> you know what I mean, that is not experimented with drugs and alcohol or uh, not, um, you know, <laughs> isn't getting eight hours of sleep every single night. And even as an athlete, they needed about 10 hours of sleep to really fully recover because they're really pushing their body. So it's like all these other things have played a role in um, decreasing their overall brain health. I mean, it's just like anyone else. Um, so, you know, I, I believe I am not one that's like, hey, we got to stop playing sports. I don't believe really that at all. Mm-hmm. I think that we need to get healthier and more proactive and, um, and pay more attention to every aspect of our health. That's what mm-hmm. I believe. Mm-hmm. Well, let's get into the photobiomodulation a little yeah. bit. Let's talk about that. I um, watched some of the videos on your site, and I guess the one thing I want to leave, and I also wanted to mention that I, whenever I was interviewing Susanna Muller about the brain spotting, I watched some of your videos, so I wanted to thank you for those. Yeah. <laughs> um, those helped me out. Um, but the photobiomodulation, um, one of the biggest questions I had about that, and I'll put a link to the video in the post in the show notes for this uh, podcast. Um, but have you ever seen Star Trek, the next generation? Yeah. 
Do you know that device that uh, Beverly Crusher, the ship's doctor, uses to heal wounds? Where it's yes. just, it's, it looks exactly like the uh, one device you use. Pretty the much. irony is, is it does heal wounds fifty percent quicker. I know. Is it? It's really cool that that works, and it's you know, it's it gives me hope for the future and what we're coming on to and what has yet to be discovered. But is that an obstacle to what you're doing? Is that y- people see this light and it's almost like, oh, that's how's that going to heal my brain? And so it becomes kind of a deterrent for some people. Do you experience that? A little bit until they start to feel the mental clarity. I'll have like a, you know, a retired football player lay there and, you know, come up and be like, whoa, but this is the clearest I've felt in years. I mean, it's kind of funny. Um, I think that you have to, it's the way that you're explaining it to someone too and what it's doing to the cell. And if you use kind of the analogy of um, you go out in the sun and your body naturally from the UV rays uh, produces vitamin D. Mm -hmm. So if you're explaining that to someone like, okay, but these are different frequencies of light uh, within the spectrum, you know, the whole spectrum of light. And therefore they stimulate the cells, mitochondria to increase in number and size. And then it releases uh, the nitric oxide, which is an antioxidant. So it's assisting with cellular recovery. Um, and then more recently, Homblin has talked about it, uh, possibly impacting the microglial process within the brain. Um, it's increasing the circulation just in general. So that detoxification is going on. Also, we know even just heating up the tissue, uh, they've talked about sauna use and so on, that uh, that's a stimulated neurogenesis also. So there's just a whole lot going on with these the near infrared infrared light Mm -hmm. and then when we talk about the blue light with my one handheld laser so blue light i mean it'll whiten your teeth it uh uh kills the multi-strain resistant staph and strep um you put the light on your skin and in it so your microbium on your skin communicates with your gut microbium and your lung microbium and your sinuses therefore positively impacts that so there's actually studies that show that it helps your gut microbiome, which is a hmm. really big topic right now and, and is truly one of the aspects of healing from post-concussion syndrome or uh, preventing CTE. I think the CTE, you know, it's really a post-mortem diagnosis. So yeah. I just, can, I, when someone comes in, I look at them as like, hey, you've got some post-concussion syndrome uh, symptoms or neurocognitive symptoms as the diagnostic and statis- in a statistical manual mental illness says, you know, there's cluster symptoms. I don't know that it's been proven to not even be, you know, scientifically valid because they're just symptoms so that we can say it's something, not just like a ton of symptoms. Mm-hmm. Um, so nonetheless, that's how I see someone. I think, okay, so here we are, we can do a QEG, which is the brain scanners that I use to assess what our baseline voltage is in our brain, how much energy is going through the brain at a time, what the distribution is, how fast we're responding to an auditory cue, to visual cue, and baseline and see where we're at right now. Then let's apply some of these therapies and see where we're at after that. Uh, neurogenesis is possible at any age. Um, I, I see people heal. My expectation is people heal. There's energy. We are communicating with things. Uh, there's got to be some belief. I mean, you look at placebo things and the power of belief. Uh, Dr. Bruce Lipton, a biologist, he's always talking about the um, power of belief because you look at these studies that are done with like medications and so on, and the placebo effect's almost the same as the control group. You know, you're just like, or vice versa. I mean, uh, the uh, intervention group. Um, so it makes me laugh because it's like, well, we have to know that or believe that something's going to work. And, you know, you're talking about like a barrier and it's like, well, if you educate someone, so the psycho ed of things like, Hey, this is what's going on with your body. This is what, why we're doing this. Um, that belief is, um, yeah, it's put in their mind. Plus we have 4,500 peer reviewed studies to prove it's doing what it's doing. Uh-huh. So that's belief to me in my scientific mind. And I'm, we're only every single day seeing that it has different uses and different dosage. When I first got it, it said, Hey, you got to hold it five minutes on the tissue. Now they're going, uh, 30 seconds is all you need on the spine to stimulate <laughs> the nerves that radiate all the way to those organs and tissues. Um, because everything is connected to the spine. I'm going, oh, this is awesome. It's like I can treat more things on an individual when they come in <laughs> than I could before, uh, given the time. So mm. so are the, are the effects from 
the light therapy, uh, and is that an immediate relief that people are feeling? You mentioned the NFL player just laid down and did it once. and Yep. Yeah. Um, it is immediate. And then it is um, long term. It only gets better. I think the interesting thing, too, that I've observed with neurocognitive with people is that they don't know how messed up they are when they come in because it's like you're drunk. <laughs> the outside of your brain's inflamed. You're kind of like, oh, you know. Um, so people really don't know. I almost want to, and I don't think it's ethical, but video someone when they first come in after a car accident, when they first come in experiencing extreme uh, symptoms, and then videotape them you know, six months later after we've done therapies and they've worked on their diet and uh, nutrients and all that kind of stuff and have them see like, see, you were really messed up, you know, <laughs> because they, they start to know that they're faster and they're remembering things, they're enjoying life again, those types of things. But it's just, it's kind of funny because you just really don't know what state you're in. So right. that's, yeah. Yeah, that is interesting. I can relate. I went through my own, you know, depressive period and coming out of that, it's like taking sunglasses off or something and being yeah. like, oh, what is going on? This is cool. So that's cool to hear. Um, so is the ther- the light therapy something that needs to be done continually or is it something that you can come in for 10 sessions in a year? And uh- So the dosing is all over the place still. We know that some studies, it was like for a year, they did it you know, twice a week kind of thing. So that was like a hundred sessions. I know that people have gotten results with less. I know that um, I've had people, <laughs> they'll have like an activation of their post-concussion syndrome symptoms. We get them knocked back down and then uh, something else traumatic in their life happens or they slip and fall and then they have to come back in after a year. And they're like, oh my gosh, the visual stuff came back. You, you know, it's just kind of interesting because you just kind of calm it back down. But I think that the biggest thing with it is um, seeing it as the body creates a homeostasis around the way that it is at this moment. So if I fell down and, you know, hurt my shoulder and I didn't go to a physical therapist, I didn't go to a doctor and I just went ahead and I just held it next to my body all the time. I stopped working out, stopped doing anything. What do you think is going to happen to my musculoskeletal system? you know, it's going to be kind of like froze up. It's going to be all tightened up. I'm going to create a whole bunch of scar tissue around all this, going to get a whole bunch of kind of suture uh, trigger points. And so then uh, having to go then to a physical therapist, to a chiropractor, whatever, all that kind of uh, body structural work and putting the light therapy on it, it's going to have to break up all that scar tissue. It's going to have to get all of that, those muscles working again. It's going to have to stimulate all that mitochondria. I'm going to have to strengthen those muscles again. I'm going to have to do a lot of stretching. We're going to have to break down some of the uh, trigger points, whether it be with foam rolling or uh, like the e-stim aspect of things. Um, It's going to be a lot of work to undo that damage. So thinking about it like that, you have to break down. It's immediate like, oh no, trauma response locking in place. You're breaking it down so it heals properly. And that's why I'm saying very much concurrently when I'm working with anyone and we're healing, they're doing all those things. I'm going, okay, so you got some trigger points up here in your neck. You braced yourself so many times when you were um, playing football. You're going to need to start, yeah, doing the cardio again. Let's start doing some yoga because yoga has even been proven to increase process, cognitive processing speed. I know a um, retired NHL player who has you know, completely uh, reversed many symptoms that he had going on from becoming a yoga instructor and really working on himself. Because again, you're working on the same part of the brain. You're getting it to calm down, uh, de- decreases inflammation, increases cognitive speed. Uh, amazing, right? Mm-hmm. So that's what you're looking at here. I typically tell people, yeah, 10 to 20 sessions is what okay. we're looking at. We're seeing where we're at. Mm-hmm. And is this something that uh, must be done under the supervision of a professional or can this be a purchased online? Uh, yeah, know? not now. Um, so it's really cool. In the last three years, that these um, in-home medical grade devices have become available. And uh, at this current time, I'm using the NeuroCare and the InLight devices because they are the ones that were done on the veterans um, as well as they're very e- easy, user-friendly and you know, you can purchase them uh, through me as I have my reseller and all this kind of stuff uh, permit because I do find that, yeah, people trying to come in multiple times as well as the whole family can use it. You can use it on other types of sports injuries or whatever that looks like, the gut health, the, you know, slip disc, uh, you know. Um, so y- you're going to need to really research the product. Though. So that's what I was going to say. It's like a medical device. You're buying it through someone who's um, 
taken the, you know, I'm a certified light therapist. So I've taken the risk of understanding of how to educate people to use it properly and of the risks, which there are very few, except for if you have seizure disorder or something of that nature, you just don't want to put it straight in front of your eyes. Um, but beyond that, there's not a whole lot of other risks. Um, you're not going to explode if you put it on all day, every day. You okay. know, at the very beginning, like, oh, you could oversaturate yourself. It's like, no, it's the same thing. I'm not going to explode with vitamin D if I stand outside all day. It's just not going to happen. Um, the body's very wise. Um, <laughs> nonetheless, so we know that 70% of the uh, products on the market don't do what they say they do. Mm -hmm. There's this one Jove light out there, the bulletproof, uh, you know, kind of biohacker, uh, you know, individuals are very interested in. And I reached out to the company and they said, oh, we've done four studies. They're just not published yet. I'm like, well, what does that mean? You know, they didn't mm -hmm. say what they're on and they're not claiming to reverse uh, any kind of neurocognitive disorder or treating depression or gut microbium or chronic pain or any of those things. They're kind of saying it's more of an expansion type of tool and that's fine. But it's, it, I would just hate for someone to order something online and it not do what it's supposed to be doing, that would break my heart. Mm. <laughs> you know, I want people to heal. So it's really looking at if you're asking a company, you need to say, hey, has a physicist assessed this to say that the LED lights are emitting what they say they are? And do you have a peer reviewed study that supports that this assists with cognitive recovery or uh, decreasing pain or decreasing depression? And you need to know from that company if they can produce those things because they legally have to. Um, so that's kind of the check marks that you're going through. Uh, some of the bigger devices, when I first got my laser, my multi-radiance laser, uh, you had to have your license mm -hmm. and say that you're treating what you're treating as a licensed professional. So um, it's very cool that these in-home devices are here now because we can help more people. Um, yeah. So yeah, you can get your own. Uh, <laughs> they're not, they're not, that's cheap. You know, we're talking nearly mm -hmm. $3,000 for one. Wow. Um, but again, for me, I'm kind of this biohacker health person, I, I have a device myself outside of my practice that I use on myself every single night. And it's increased my voltage in my brain as measured by my uh, Wavi QEG. And it helps me sleep and I don't wake up with any sore muscles and aches and pains because I, I like to work out hard. It's something I like to do. So <laughs> cool. yeah. That was actually my next question was using the device um, outside of trying to treat a brain injury so it sounds like it can be used for something yeah so and yeah, you can uh get an increase in um sports performance um whether it be uh strength gains sports specific gains 300 percent is what one of homeland studies most recently talked about and they were actually uh the title on it was like should it be banned you know with the u.s olympic committee is this the next thing that's going to be banned because um if you're using it within three hours of your training, you're going to get 300% more gains. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is awesome. Really? Um, I just don't like to have aches and pains, you know? So if I go for a long hike and my feet are kind of sore, I throw on the light therapy and I don't have, my feet aren't sore the next day. Um, so that's how I'm using it. And plus we know just in the general average population, you're putting it on your head, it will increase your focus immediately in your cognitive processing. And there's some YouTube videos out there that Homlin's done. He's, he's really entertaining. And <laughs> yeah, so if you Google on YouTube, Dr. Michael Homlin, he'll talk all about it. He's an interesting researcher, but he'll say stuff like that. Like, oh, I put it on my frontal lobe so that I could focus. I mean, it's awesome. Hmm. Yeah. Interesting. Oh, and it heals bones 50% quicker. So if your kid, you know, hurts themselves in sports, uh, there you go. They're back out there quicker. Wow. So it really is like Star Trek. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and like, oh, yeah. And like you said, like the tissue, I burned myself and even sunburns. I put it on sunburn and it knocked it down. But I burned myself and the burn was gone in two days because I was putting my light on it. It was kind of funny. Uh, really? On the stove, I hit the, you know, oven rock thing. So anyways. <laughs> Um, how widespread are treatments like this? Is this something that is penetrating the mainstream yet, or is it still kind of considered a, a fringe treatment? It's fairly, um, uh, they would say it off label, right? In some off ways, label? you know, okay. because really, uh, physical therapists and chiropractors are the primary individuals and some massage therapists and stuff that have them because it only expands on the gains when you're working with someone in those, um, disciplines, right? So the, oh man, the spine's really inflamed. I can't get it to 
align properly, you put some light on there, it'll decrease the inflammation and in the adjustment sticks, right? Um, so that's kind of the avenues that they've been used, the lasers. Most of the big sports team, the NFL has the light force laser. So mm. they're tre- treating muscular skeletal stuff, but they're not doing the head injury yeah. uh, protocol yet, which would take forever. I mean, the athletic trainer has how many athletes? Because <laughs> mm. um, it's 20 minutes. You're putting it on the head for 20 minutes. Um, so... You would have to be looking for certified light therapists, photobiomodulation, just Googling that in your area and seeing if there is an individual that is utilizing it that way and saying, hey, can I come in? You'll do the protocol. Um, But it's not very widespread. So in Colorado, there's a, because that's where I'm originally from. I'm out here in Seattle, Washington now, but uh, there were quite a few of us. (laughs) So it was kind of funny. And same thing with like brain spotters, the psychotherapeutic technique I used too. And it's, it's been interesting because there are just certain areas where things aren't very um, prevalent. And I know that there are quite a few light therapists down in Texas. And so these things, I know it sounds so woo-woo, like light therapists. It's like, well, like, I, I don't know how else to say it. You're using LED light to uh, possibly impact tissue. Well, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, so it's just not very mainstream yet. And you know, uh, James Carroll, who brought light therapy to Harvard in 1993, and I finally got to train under him last November. It was very exciting. Uh, British guy, interesting, very funny. Um, he went in front of, with another, a couple researchers, a Congress in la- last October, and were trying to get light therapy um, mainstream in Western medicine and just uh, being covered by insurance and all these things, particularly for the opioid epidemic. It knocks down pain. So I've had a couple uh, skier clients in the past whom um, high level US ski teamer type of athletes uh, who had surgeries. And after one day of the um, narcotics, you know, the opiates, it was making them so sick because again, their body's very healthy. Um, so we were able to dose the light every two to three hours to keep the pain cycle locked down. And you can absolutely do that. Um, so that's, what's really cool about the light therapy. It will stop that pain uh, inflammatory signal. And so they went in front of Congress, nothing has came of it, but they tried, you know? Um, so I see it as it's going to keep being brought up and brought up and hopefully make it through that insurance is covering it, that, Obviously, right after a car accident type of thing, someone should have this on their head in the hospital because we know if you're putting on within four hours, we get the greatest results. It's like Mm -hmm. of recovery. It just really uh, reverses the damage um, right away. So I hope. Yeah. (laughs) You touched on the NFL a little bit. I don't want to get too deep into the weeds on this, but um, what is your understanding of how they are um is there has their perspective changed on this at all on cte or is it uh i think okay so you know i know the lawyer who litigated the nfl nhl ncaa he recently just died of cancer Mm. very amazing guy met him at a sports concussion conference um why he started the first you know that first case uh with the nfl was that his law partner, one of his partners within his firm, Fred McNeil had um, been a football player and started to experience a cognitive decline. They had to let him go. They didn't really know what was going on. They thought he just kind of lost the zest for the law field. And um, then his wife contacted their law firm going, man, he's missing. We don't know what's going on here. And so he had left home, was kind of wandering the streets type of, you know, very disorientated. And so they started to want to understand why. They started to think, is there a connection? And so that's when, you know, with the movie Concussion, you got Dr. Amalu, Dr. Mickey Collins. I keep talking about him. Alec Baldwin played him in the movie. I've trained under him multiple times now in the last five years. He's an amazing guy doing some incredible research out of University of Pittsburgh. Um, In the next two two years, we're going to have a ton of data on treatment, which is amazing. But they were asking, hey, what's going on here? And it was really more of just trying to understand um, what we should be doing, right? It, I don't know if it was ever just this horrible, like, oh man, they're responsible for this, this, this. It was really to change things. And mm-hmm. what you saw from it was things have changed. We have no more tackle in college practice, uh, the tackling and the minor, um, minor leagues, uh, uh, youth <laughs> of football has uh, declined and that's great, right? So these are really positive things and the awareness, gosh, now we have all these researchers and all these people looking at this. So, Really, I don't know if it's ever been that the NFL needs to be doing this, this, this for these players. I believe in personal empowerment. 
Okay. So <laughs> when I was running cross country, even in college, I was not looking to my coach who was my professor. He was uh, my advisor for my exercise physiology degree. Um, but I wasn't looking to him to tell me what to eat. I wasn't looking to him to tell me not to drink or do drugs. I wasn't looking to him to do all these things. Um, it was my responsibility as I saw it to, um, keep my body healthy, to keep my body functioning optimally. I didn't look at him going, Oh man, I'm getting chin splits. It's you. It's like, no, you need to be listening to your own body and figuring things out. And these are full grown men. Um, so I don't know. And and some people would disagree with me. I, I don't know. I think that the reality is though, is like, like I said, if you can honestly tell me you've never drink, drank, you're eating healthy, you're <laughs> sleeping, you're doing every single thing possible. You've looked at every single of these alternative uh, therapeutic techniques and cranial sacral, chiropractor. I mean, there's all sorts of things that we know assist with um, keeping blood flow to the brain, keeping us healthy. I just don't know if you can blame your boss um, for uh, what's happening to your brain and body. Mm -hmm. I think that what they have in place now is is amazing because they are doing the baseline assessment. They're pulling you out. They have the concussion spotters. I think they are doing what they can do realistically. I have a couple Seahawks as clients. They don't want to quit. I've talked to them about certain things. They they love the game. They're doing what they're doing. They're very young. So perhaps maybe their perspective will change in a few years. I don't know. I, I just think that there's some aspect within all health of personal responsibility. It's, again, trying to sue McDonald's for, uh, you know, cardiovascular disease is just unreasonable to me. Um, so, you know, I'm not one that's sitting there saying the enemy, the enemy. It's like these are this is a job and it's really up to you to do the best that you can do for your health. So that's, that's where I go with things with some of that. That's fair. That's fair. Um, yeah, I think that that's, that wraps up all the questions I had. Was there anything else you wanted to maybe add or end on? Um, well, if you are a parent out there with your kids and you want them to play these contact sports, um, do baseline assessments. You can get them a WAVI QEG or other types of QEG measures to look at the brain health prior to them participating in the sport. You can uh, look to getting them on a very low inflammatory type of diet. You can look at supplements that their nutritionist or pediatrician or whomever can recommend for them as everyone's biochemistry is very different. Um, and looking into light therapy, but I, I really don't think that it's that everyone is um, doomed to have CTE or to have these negative results. And we know that the number one intervention for uh, traumatic brain injury concussion is absolutely psychotherapy. And they have seen that even just one psychotherapy um, appointment following a concussion can assist someone in healing 80% quicker. Wow. And it's really just the knowledge, like what I'm telling you and really saying, hey, these are the expectations. These are the things that you need to be doing. And so your kid gets diagnosed with a concussion. By all means, get on the internet, Google concussion psychotherapist, concussion expert, um, neuropsychologist, whatever that looks like. Uh, most sports psychs, we are very much uh, trained in understanding this as it is our responsibility. It's an aspect of sports injury. Um, yeah, you're taking them there so that you're you know, being proactive. I'm sorry, we can't sit here and pretend like it's someone else's job or responsibility to keep us safe in this world. It's like, man, we got a worldwide web out there. We've, there are so many resources. So, um, yeah, we're not doomed. Our kids aren't doomed to get CTE. I, this is just, and we know that the brain goes to, to a depressed level of functioning with any like concussion or physical injury. And that's Dr. Jeffrey Kucher from the American Academy of Neurology. And he's also the U.S. ski team doc and he's the team doc for the NBA. And it's, you know, it, depression happens anytime someone gets injured. Mm -hmm. So truly, again, <laughs> psychotherapy is your number one. And then looking at some of these other holistic brain body um, therapies. And yeah, and that will pay off in long term. <laughs> and you're based in Washington. Um, yes. But if someone wanted to consult with you remotely, um, they can, correct? Yes, yes. I do telemedicine with athletes all over the world. So it's 
fabulous. <laughs> okay. So I will put links to your website in the show notes for this um, episode as well. Yes, uh, absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much for your time. I just want people to be happy. I don't want anyone to be in mental or physical pain. There is hope. You know, science is evolving very rapidly. Uh, yeah. Thanks for listening to the EW Podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, you can subscribe to the podcast or leave a review on iTunes or Spotify. And again, if you or someone you know may be at risk of CTE, please find a link to Paige Roberts in the show notes and schedule a consultation. Until next time.